Hello, my name is Professor Matthew Schmidt and I'd like to welcome you to genetics. Today we're going to look at what has come to be known as Mendel's second law. He called it his law of independent assortment. And in order to illustrate it, we're going to be introducing the idea of a dihybrid cross during this session. So let's get right to it. We do want to relate this to what has been said about the law of segregation Mendel's first law and monohybrid crosses as well. So Mendel's second law, independent assortment, you can see right on the screen, I'm just going to read you the definition. It's a little bit lengthy and wordy, but we're going to dissect it after we say it. So this law states that the segregation or separation of one pair of alleles at a particular locus is not linked to the segregation of any other pair of alleles during gamete formation. So that certainly is a, mouth, a mouthful. Um, the bottom line, as we're going to see, is this. When we were doing our monohybrid crosses, say with flower color, all we were paying attention to was that one trait, the flower color. And we observed at that time that there are plenty of other traits that the pea plants are exhibiting and transmitting we just weren't going to pay any attention to them. But what happens if you do start to keep track of and pay attention to multiple traits, or in this case, two traits at the same time? So maybe instead of just keeping track of flower color, we could keep track of flower color and seed color at the same time and see what happens. So in order to do this, we have to do what's called a dihybrid cross. Dihybrid simply means that what we just said, that we're going to keep track of two traits at the same time as we go ahead and do our crosses. So I'd like you guys to consider this cross. In using the same terminology that we've been using, in the parental generation, we're going to cross, and, and notice that these crosses are of the exact same form as the ones that we did last time. That is, we start with two pure breeding parental organisms, we make an F1, and then we cross the F1 with each other or themselves. This is a, just the classic way that Mendel did it over and over and over again. So if you look at the screen here, what we have, by the way, uh, I just decided we would use different alleles here. So we have big Y, which means yellow versus the green seed color. I think we used that one in the past. And big R is round as opposed to wrinkled, which is little r, two different traits. So what I want you to see is we haven't done this before, but in this case, that parent is big Y, big Y, big R, big R. It's homozygous at two different loci, at two different places. So with respect to its color, yellow, it's a homozygote, big Y, big Y. And with respect to the P, si uh, sorry, the, the P shape, it's round, but it's big R, big R. So this would be pure breeding for both traits. If you cross plants that were big Y, big Y, big R, big R with themselves through eternity, you would get yellow round plants. The same type of logic applies to the other parent, which is exhibiting the recessive traits. So it is pure breeding because it's homozygous at both locations. Uh, so this would be green, which is little y, the recessive version of, uh, of yellow, if you will. It would be green and it would be wrinkled seeds. But again, this would be pure breeding. So if you took it, it would be pure breeding for both the traits. So if you cross members of this line with each other forever, you're always going to get the green and the wrinkled. It probably doesn't come as that big of a shock based on what we've said that if you cross these two pure breeding lines, all of the F1 are going to resemble one of the parents phenotypically. And they're going to resemble the parent that's exhibiting the dominant traits. So if you want to think of it this way, all this parent can donate is big Y, big R. All this parent can donate is little y, little r. And then all of the F1, where the convention is to keep the alleles together when we write them, all of the F1 are going to be um, heterozygous at the Y locus. So in other words, big Y, 
little y, but they will still appear to be yellow because of the dominance of the yellow allele over the green allele. And they'll also be heterozygous at the seed shape locus. So they're big R, little r, but they will appear uh, round just as this parent did. So, so far it doesn't seem very different from what we did before. But here is the big question that Mendel wanted to ask and then subsequently went on to answer. Think of it this way. What it says here is that what we want to know is, are the alleles big Y and big R in this case that came from one parent, are they somehow stuck together or linked together as they travel through the generations? And by the same token, are the other ones that came from the other parent, little y and little r, are they linked or stuck together? Now, the idea is, remember, Mendel didn't know anything about chromosomes, or at least certainly not pertaining to this type of analysis. So it wasn't clear whether things that were in one organism were somehow together. I don't know a better way to explain it, that they would travel together. So in other words, what it really comes down to is asking yourself this. What kind of gametes can this particular F1 plant make? If it, We're going to self it, right? We're going to do this cross, big Y, little y, big R, little r, times itself in the F1. So what kind of gametes can those plants make? Well, think of it this way. If the big Y and the big R that came from that parent are somehow stuck together, they're going to remain stuck together. And that would imply that these F1 could only make two types of gametes big Y, big R, and the other ones came from this parent, right? Little y and little r. If they were somehow stuck together, those would be the only gametes that these things were capable of making. Now, if that were the case, I'm not saying that it is, but if that were the case, as I say here, only these gametes could be made, big Y, big R, and little y, little r. And if we do a Punnett square, We'll do it in just a second. It would predict a 3 to 1 ratio, just like we saw before. But in this case, we're taking the two traits into account. So in other words, the 3 fourths of the offspring would be yellow and round. And 1 fourth would be green and wrinkled. And you'll notice that if that were the case, all those offspring would resemble one of the initial parents from the P generation, right? So let's do a little Punnett square just to make sure that we understand this. We can have some room over in the corner here. Because the idea is this. If we're crossing the F1 times itself and we're postulating that these uh, traits are somehow stuck together, these alleles, then, the only, then each parent can make only two gametes, big Y, big R, and little y, little r, right? We're not used to doing it this way, but you certainly can do it this way. So let's just fill in the boxes. We're seeing that. Remember, the ratios we're discussing are phenotypic ratios. So when you see the four outcomes there, one of them, this one is homozygous at both locations, just like the original parent. These two are heterozygous at both locations. But the key here is all three of those look yellow, and they look round, right? So that's the three out of the three to one ratio. The only one that looks different would be this one, which looks, as you would suspect, green and wrinkled, right? So we still have a three to one ratio, even though we're taking two traits into account. Now, just to make sure this isn't getting confusing, I made a hypothesis, and that was that these things are in fact linked together. And if they are, this is the prediction you would make, that you'll see this 3 to 1 ratio. In fact, it turns out that they are not linked together. And that's why the law of independent assortment exists. But I really believe that understanding this first, what would happen if they were linked, is really the key to understanding what actually does happen. So when Mendel went ahead and did that...